What's going on, Lunatics? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for checking into today's episode. We're back out in the garage, the bait laboratory, and we're going to be making some jigs today. Um, I need to fill up my jig box, so we're going to be making some half ounce and three eighth ounce football jigs today. We're going to make some stand-up jigs and some of the standard jigs that I make. Um, the standard jigs that I am making in today's video are, um, are exactly the same as what I offer in my custom jigs on my website. So go check that out. Um, I'd really appreciate you guys do that. Um, I do those in, in like a bulk run. So if I get a few orders that come in when, um, um, after this video, then I'll put it out to basically all my Instagram and social media and stuff like that to see if anybody else is interested. Just helps cut down some of the cost. Um, so that way I can give them to you at the price that, um, that I offer Matt. So go check that out on my website, mattlunafishing.com. And then in today's video, like I said, we're gonna be making the stand-up jigs and the standard ones. We're gonna be using some six cent skirts, some owner three yacht deep throat hooks, my favorite jig hook right now, um, super sharp hook, and it really pins them when that hook gets in there. So we're gonna be making those jigs today, so stay tuned. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to make these jigs. So again, thanks for checking into today's video. Make sure to give it a like and comment down there as well. So let's get to it. One thing I forgot to say is please subscribe to my channel. My channel is growing right now and I want to thank all of the new subscribers and everybody that has been um, following and watching my videos for a long time now. All that support is really, really appreciated. So thank you very much. Please like today's video and let me know if you're interested in making any of your own jigs or if you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments. But um, new people coming to my channel, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Got a lot of other content in the past videos and plenty more to come your guys' way. So let's get to these jigs. Let's start, let's go, let's do this. So here are the differences between the two jigs that I make. This one right here is your standard football head jig. It does not sit up and stand up like this one. This is the stand up head. We're gonna be making this jig right here in the stand up version. And these jigs right here, this exact one, I got some of those available on my website. So if you're interested in getting any of these guys, check out my website, mattlunafishing.com. Go to the shop and you'll see those standard football jigs and some of the stand up as well in this living rubber skirt. Here's some of the additional items that you're gonna need. You're obviously gonna need a hook for these jigs. Uh, these right here are base hole pins. These are what give you the slot for the weed guard once you get ready to put your weed guards in. And these are wire forms. And what these are, these are wire keeper that are gonna go in these stand-up football jigs. And then here's the packaging for the owner. Deep throat flip and pitch hooks in the three out size. These are the hooks that we're gonna be going with today. Okay, so making these is a very simple process. Literally, all you have to do is place everything inside of your mold. So this is the hooks going in first. That's the half ounce size. This is the 3 8 ounce size. And then we'll do the same down here. This is the half ounce size and the 3 8 ounce size right there. Then we're going to take our base hole pins, set them in the mold like so. And we'll do that again on this one. So those ones are ready to go because these are the standard ones. These do not have that wire keeper that the stand-up ones have. So we're gonna close this mold up, get it out of the way. And then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna set our wire forms into our mold like that. We'll get the other one, set it in as well. Just like so. And then we're gonna take our base hole pins and we will set them in there as well. And then that mold is ready to go. We'll close that one up as well. And one thing you wanna make sure of when you're doing these um, lead pourings or plastic pourings or whatever is making sure that everything's flush so that we don't get any flashing. So that one looks good. And then we're gonna check this one and that one looks good as well. It's literally Christmas Eve as I'm filming this video right now. And obviously that means it's December, so it's probably cold outside. So what I like to do is set my molds on top of my lead pot so that way I can get these molds heated up. It's gonna help me get better pours so I don't have incomplete pours and stuff like that because sometimes when your lead um, gets poured in there all hot and the mold itself is cold, your lead ends up um, solidifying too fast and you get incomplete pours, which isn't that big of a deal. You just have to melt the lead off that hook and start over again. But usually if you can get that lead and mold nice and hot, you'll get good complete pours from the beginning. All right, so we're ready to put our lead into our mold to make our jigs. So what we're gonna do is just make sure what mold we got. This is the standard football jig mold. And I am gonna be pouring into these two slots right there. 
So let's make sure we have a good, nice feed, which we do. Pour that lead into the mold, just like so. Do it in the next one, just like so. And then we'll let those cool down and check to make sure that we have good, complete pours in a second. And this is the stand-up football jig mold right here. So we're gonna pour our lead into the mold and then into this cavity as well. And then we'll check those here in a second, see if we got good pours. Okay, so we're gonna check our jigs right now, open up our mold, and then we're gonna take these out and check them out. So that's a nice, good, complete pour. Set that one aside, we'll check this half ounce one and check these out as well. That one turned out good, nice and complete. And then we'll check our stand-up heads. And this one turned out, looks like it turned out good as well. So we'll check it out. That one turned out good. And then we will check out our 3 8 ounce. And I can see that a, there's a little bit missing out of it, which it's not major. I could fish this, but you can see where it didn't fill in right there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how you can just basically remelt this down. And um, it doesn't affect the hook. And I'll show you what I do in order to uh, use this hook again, because this, is, this isn't a wasted hook. This isn't a wasted product. You can just melt this lead off again. All right, so what I'm gonna show you is how to melt this lead off this hook and reuse this hook as well, because it's not wasted. But one thing you do need to do is you need to take this base hole pin out, and it's easy enough to do. And then literally all you're gonna do is you're gonna take this jig and you're gonna dip it back into your lead pot like so. I like to dip it at an angle to keep the eye out of the lead as much as possible. And all that lead's already off. And then there you go that will go back into your mold. It did not affect any of the hook at all. And you're gonna be able to reuse that hook. And then you just literally take some pliers and then you get your wire form out of there as well. And what I'm gonna do now, this is the hook that we just dipped back into our lead pot. And I'm gonna set it back in my mold, just like that. I'm gonna take that same wire form that I just took out of the, mold, out of the lead, set it back in there. And then we're gonna take our base hole pin, set it back into our mold, and then we're gonna run this through again. So we're gonna take our mold over to our pot, and we are gonna make this jig up, pour the lead into the mold, just like so. Let it cool down, and we will check and see if everything turned out good. Okay, so we're gonna open up our mold, and we're gonna check out the finished product. And let me show you guys here. I think it turned out pretty good. And that is using all the components that we just dipped back into our lead pot. Okay, I'm gonna go through this process again with you guys. We're just gonna literally set our components into our molds. Take the wire form now, set it into the mold as well. Take the base hole pin and set it in. And we're gonna do the same thing for the 3 8 ounce size. Our hook in there, wire form. Base hole pin. Sometimes you gotta be gentle with the components because this isn't the actual hook this mold is made for, but it does work well and I really like the hook. So I kind of have to fumble around a little bit to get everything to go in there, but it does go in there and it's nice and flush just like that. So then we're gonna go to our standard football jig and set our hooks in the mold. And then this one does not take the wire form. So we're just gonna take the base hole pins and set them in. And now we are ready to pour. So I've got the stand-up football head ready to go. Check our flow. And we are gonna dump the lead into the mold. Go to the 3 8 ounce. And then we'll go over to the standard football head jigs and put the lead in there. And we'll check those here in a second. So off camera, I made a couple more runs of jigs. We got a total of 16 jigs here. Right here we have the 3 8 standard jigs. Right here we have the half ounce standard jigs. On this side we have the half ounce stand up and the 3 8 stand up. So as you can see with this jig, we still have the sprue that needs to get cut off. And then once I cut this off, I just like to take a file and file down a little bit of extra to smooth down the head a little bit before I paint.
What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take my cutters and I'm just gonna cut this sprue off just like that. And then there's, if you can see it on camera, there's a little bit of a extra that kind of is left over, a little bit of a high spot. So I'm gonna take the file. I'm just gonna file this down just to smooth it out before I go and paint this. Doesn't take a whole lot, but just enough to smooth it down so that way there's no sharp edges. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this stand-up football jig. The stand-up football jig has a flat side on it, which makes it stand up. So just cut that off. And then there's a little bit of a ridge on it. So I'm gonna take my file and I'm gonna file it down. It's all smooth now and it's ready for paint. Okay, so we are ready to paint. This is a fluid bed right here. And what, what this does is this, there's a fish tank air pump that pumps air into these hoses that go into the fluid bed. And it just keeps the, the powder paint that's inside this cup, this green pumpkin powder paint, it keeps it nice and loose. So that way the paint goes on there much easier. And what we're gonna do is we gotta heat up our lead with this heat gun, which then we put the lead into the powder paint and the powder paint melts onto our lead. So the first jig that we're gonna paint is this stand-up football jig. I like to leave the base hole pin inside the jig when I paint. Some people take it out, but when you take it out, the powder paint will fill up the hole that was created by the base hole pin. So I like to paint it, and then right after I paint it, I, while the paint's still wet, I'll take this base hole pin out with a pair of pliers, just like so, and then I will let it dry. Okay, so we got our base hole pin back into our jig. So we're gonna turn on the heat gun and we're gonna let it heat up for a little bit, and then we will put our jig head into the heat that's coming out of this heat gun, and then I like to rotate it back and forth to get the jig head nice and warm, and you want it to be warm all over, because if not, then that paint doesn't get uh, melted on there evenly, so we'll just keep it on there, and about a 20 count is good for a half ounce jig, but since I just turned on the heat gun, it's probably gonna take a little bit longer, so we're gonna check and see if that's good. So we'll go over to our fluid bed. We're gonna dip this in, turn it around, get the extra off. And it's a little bit dull because of it not being hot enough. So we'll just put it back over here and melt it down a little bit more. And then we have our finished jig head that's now painted. So now I've got one of our standard football jigs. And in the last jig, I didn't take the the base hole pin out for you guys on camera. So I'll do that on this one. So we're gonna put this jig on for about a 20 count. And then we'll dip it into our powder paint. So we'll see, that should be good. So we'll go over to our fluid bed. We'll dip this in, dab off that extra. And then what we're gonna do now is take this base hole pin out just like so, set it down. And then there you have it, you got a painted jig. Okay, so we got all of our jigs painted. I didn't do all of them on camera, obviously, but we got our jigs painted. Now it's time to make sure that the eyes are not painted closed, and that's an easy fix, but you wanna make sure that you do this before you put them in to bake. Okay, so right now what I'm gonna show you how to do is basically to open up the eye of the hook. It's probably gonna be hard for you guys to see in the video, but as you can see, there's an eye in this jig right now. It's fully open, so you would probably be able to get your line through to tie it, but I like to just take, you know, just a hook I have lying around and um, open up that hook eye. It's basically just to break some of that powder paint loose from the eye of this jig head, and that just opens it up so that way you can get the, the line through a little bit better. This isn't always the best way to do it. Some people say that by doing it this way, you might end up having sharp edges on there and can have the line break, but I haven't had any issues doing it this way, so this is what I do. So this jig head right here, the, the paint when I powder painted it covered up the eye of the hook. So obviously, if I don't open up the hook eye, you won't be able to fish this jig because you won't be able to get the line through there. So all you gotta do to do that on this jig head because this one doesn't have a recessed eye like the stand-up head has. So this one you can use this tool, which is just called an eye buster. And you basically just put the eye of the hook through the hole of the eye buster and you just basically break loose this powder paint. And this is why you gotta do this before you put them into to bake because it will be much more difficult to do this after you bake this powder paint onto the jig head. 
and basically this is all you got to do to open up the eye of the hook some people don't like to do it this way because they feel like it'll break the line because you'll have sharp edges on there i haven't had any problems with it myself and this is what i do okay so all of our jigs are ready to go into the oven to bake and the reason you want to bake these in the oven is to cure that powder paint to the jig head it makes it much more durable okay so literally all i do is lay these or set these into the toaster oven that i have out in the garage and hang them upside down that's not the best way to do it but that's the way that i do it and as long as you don't get too much powder paint on your jig heads you won't have any issues with hanging them upside down they do make some different tools that you can buy that allow you to put these upright so that way if the paint does start to move at all while it's in there curing it'll go down the shank of the hook rather than off the top of the jig head but this is what i'm working with and it's working for me so it'll probably work okay for you as well so i got this set at 350 for about 20 25 minutes so all the jigs that we made today are curing in the oven i had a couple that were already poured and ready to go just had no weed guards in them and these are the stand-up jigs that we just made literally exactly the same but what we're going to do now is we're going to put some skirts on it these are my two favorite skirts from six cents for my jigs this one right here is the jungle craw color and this is the grass theory color obviously i've already opened them up because i've put these skirts on some jigs already but what i'm going to do next is show you how simple it is to put these skirts on so i got one jungle craw skirt right here one grass theory skirt right there we're going to start off with the grass theory skirt so as you can see it's very much offset which is a good thing that's what you want but i'm going to change that just a little bit so i'm going to pull this down probably like a half an inch this is all you want to do about half an inch right there and then as you can see because of the packaging and this rubber band being on there they do start to kind of get stuck together and literally all you got to do is just pull them apart just like this and uh, once you get them all pulled apart they will flare out just like you want um, this is going to happen no matter what what brand you use and um, you just pull them apart and once that's done we'll slide this skirt on there and i'll show you something that you need to take into consideration when putting the skirts on your jigs and this doesn't matter if you make your own or buy a pre-made one like this is you have to make sure you put it on the right direction because you want the long side this side right here this long side you want that side to be the part that comes down from it so i'll show you what i mean right now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep this green pumpkin side and you want the short side to be facing down and you will take your hook point and you're going to put the hook point right through the middle of this jig skirt and you're just literally going to slide everything on just like so and then you're going to push this jig skirt right up the keeper and it's now set in place and this jig is now ready to go we just got a epoxy weed guard in there so now we're going to take the jungle craw skirt and we're going to do the exact same thing is just pull it up about a half inch just like so and then we're just going to separate all these strands just like we did with the grass theory color so once we get these all loose i will slide this skirt on to the jig and then the next step is literally just epoxying that weed guard in to our jigs and then we are ready to go and once that that epoxy dries these things are ready to go catch some fish and these colors for sure are going to catch you fish i've caught fish on both of these colors and um, definitely are my favorites so this is ready to go so what we're going to do is do the same thing all over again we want the short side which is right here to be on the bottom we're going to take our hook point go right into the middle of our jig skirt just like so go right down Try to keep everything in the middle of the skirt so we get good um, coverage everywhere. And then we're just going to slide this all the way up the jig till it sits in its little spot. These jigs have a little keeper for the jig skirt. And then that's the final product right there. Good looking jig. Just put that weed guard in. That's it.
So using this jig as an example, you want to make sure that your skirt collar before you put it on is offset from one side to the other because you have to make up for this extra distance on the collar because if you put the short side on the top, you're not going to get an even skirt here at the bottom. So that's what you need to make sure of is making sure that the the bottom side where the hook goes in, just like I showed you guys, is the short side. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a skirt that doesn't look right because it's not gonna be even down here at the bottom. Okay, so the last step in the process in making our jigs is putting in the weed guards. What I like to do is I like to use Gorilla Epoxy, um, the five setting epoxy. I mix it together using a toothpick and then I just dab a little bit in and then put it into my football head and just wait for them to dry and then they're ready to fish. So let me show you guys how to do that. Okay, so the first step is obviously having the epoxy. I'm gonna take this little cap off and then you wanna to try to pour even amounts of epoxy out of the tube. You want it to be even and I don't need a lot cause I'm only doing two right this second. And that's way more than I'm actually gonna use, but you will, you will end up wasting some epoxy. And then you just take the, the toothpick and mix the two parts of the epoxy together because this activates the epoxy to start to harden. And that's what you need. You need that reaction to happen for this epoxy to start to set. And then we will mix that together real nicely, just like I'm doing right now. And that should probably be good enough. And then all I do is I literally just take the end of my weed guard and I'm just gonna dab it into that epoxy just a little bit. You don't need a ton. And I'll take my jig, which I have right here, and I just like to move the skirt out of the way. So as you can see right there, the skirt's out of the way. And I'm, gonna, oh, and I'm just gonna set my weed guard into my jig, push it in, and then that's that. So we'll do the same thing over again with the Grass Theory color. S move that skirt out of the way of the jig of the jig weed guard hole, dab that weed guard into the epoxy, and then we're just gonna set this inside, just like so. And it's all the way in there. And now this one's done. Okay, so those are our finished jigs. That's the jungle craw color. And then we have our grass theory color right there as well. These two colors are by far my favorite. Six Cents has so many good colors, it's hard to decide which ones are the best. But I've bought a bunch so far, and I just really feel like these two um, have worked the best for me so far. But, I mean, you can pick any of the skirts that they have on their website, and those things are going to catch fish. These have just been my, my, my favorite so far. Well, that's going to do it for today's video. I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope you can see how easy it is to make a jig like this. Uh, making your own skirt like this is going to be a little bit more difficult. It's going to take a lot more practice. I have made my own jig skirts in the past, and I've really started to go in the direction of buying these six cents ones just because they're so intricate and they have really, really good colors, which is one of the main reasons why I started buying those. There are times where I still will make some of my own jig skirts. Some of my spinner baits that I have been fishing in some of my recent fishing videos all have skirts that I made myself. I will do a video in the future that's specific to making your own jig skirts. Um, I, I've gotten a lot of questions in the past over one of the tools that I use to make my own jig skirts, but I wanna make a video using um, a tool that's more readily accessible to everybody because the tool that I've been using in some of my past videos, um, I don't know where you can get it. I've gotten a lot of questions about it. Um, it's one that I got a long, long time ago and um, I don't even know that I've seen one since the day that I bought that jig skirt making tool. So I'll, I'll do that in the future, but just it, these skirts are just pretty, pretty legit, pretty awesome colors. But I just wanna show you how easy it is to make your own jigs. You just gotta have the equipment and um, you can get that all at the Do It Mold site. And I'm gonna link everything in the description of this video. So if you wanna start making any of this stuff yourself or see the products that I'm using specifically for these jigs and in my videos and in my fishing, those links are in the description of today's video for these football jigs. So I really hope you enjoyed watching today. I really appreciate it. Please subscribe to my channel if you're new. Please give this video a thumbs up and let me know what you think about the jigs that I made today in today's video. 
in the comments. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me today in the bait laboratory making these football jigs. Really appreciate your time and I will see you guys next time. See ya.